foremost to Dr. Bowe for uh, coaching me and mentoring me over this past year. Really, really appreciated his work. Uh, for Chris Medina as well for coaching the Wiley program, allowing us to come compete. Uh, to everyone in the audience for taking time to come participate in this, to assist in fundraising for the Wiley College program. They're always phenomenal to compete against, and I really, really do hope that these fundraising activities are successful. So with that, let's go ahead and begin. James Farmer Jr., a graduate of Wiley College and the creator of Affirmative Action, describes the purpose of affirmative action as eliminating inequities based on color. Affirmative action was intended to be a counter to racist hiring and admission preferences in the 1960s and was relatively successful in achieving that end. However, in current times, affirmative action has taken on a new meaning. According to Farmer's biographer Gail Beal, who's with us in the audience tonight, says, Farmer, the father of affirmative action, saw that the concept had been twisted since then Vice President Johnson first proposed it. He said they had to be qualified. Affirmative action did not mean hiring unqualified people. Unfortunately, affirmative action has become skewed from its original intent. Farmer intended affirmative action to fight selection discrimination. Yet the policy is no longer a mechanism to fight racism and hiring and firing, but rather a band-aid covering a wound in need of far more serious surgery, which is why my partner and I stand in opposition to the resolution. Now, according to Harvard professor of public policy, Thomas Kane, efforts to diversify the student body translated to a 400 point bonus for minority students on the SAT test. Affirmative action, originally intended to be minority preference, between two equally qualified candidates has the effect now of inflating qualifications for the minority candidate. A Princeton study of college admissions rates finds that a jump of 400 SAT points increases probability of being admitted by 10%. Let's go ahead and examine the implications of this. First, affirmative action is no longer a counter to selective discrimination, but rather values diversity at the expense of achievement. Second, inflating qualifications on paper does not empower the individual. Question. Yes, accept it. Are you implying that the, the score of the, the score of minority SAT scores are not equitable to that of white students? I'm saying that because of entrenched economic inequality statistically and empirically, minorities are going to have lower SAT scores, not because they're less intelligent, but because society has not afforded them the same economic advantages that they have the majority within society. Now that's the second implication, is that an SAT score is not the same as training the student to actually obtain those qualifications. Affirmative action is too little, too late, and fails to address the root causes of systemic inequality. Now importantly, for a policy to be necessary, it must be required to achieve its goals. If affirmative action fails to increase diversity or individual achievement, then there must be some alternative solution to actually obtain these end goals. Now, according to comprehensive analysis of law school affirmative action policies completed in 2015 for the Statistical Science Journal, uh, current affirmative action policies relative to a socioeconomic based form of policy neither help nor harm minority academic outcomes. Basically, affirmative action provides no unique advantage to minorities over other forms of admissions policies that aim at helping people who are impoverished. Now, a 2013 paper by Antonovics and Sander in the American Law and Economics Review analyzed California's 1998 ban on affirmative action. And here's what they found. The ban increased the signaling value of attending UC schools for minorities and had a modest warming effect on minority participation in California schools. Finally, affirmative action has failed to produce better economic outcomes for individuals. A 2015 National Bureau of Economics paper on academic and employment affirmative action concludes that this change on earnings was not statistically different from zero. So why is this? Why has affirmative action failed at solving for diversity and economic issues. According to econometric analysis done by Harvard in 2010, selection discrimination now has little to no explanatory power for economic and racial inequality. Yes. Do you believe that there's a positive correlation between graduating college and the amount of money that you make? Uh, I would agree with that, yes, and I'm gonna be explaining and elaborating on that within my speech. The answer is not affirmative action, but rather something else as we'll be 
discussing. So Harvard says that uh, having selection discrimination has little explanatory power for racial inequality. So refer back to what he said in his speech. There is a bias in admissions that prevent black people from being admitted. That's not the case according to econometric analysis from Harvard. Rather, inequality is perpetuated by entrenched economic disadvantages. Let's put this in context of Farmer's affirmative action proposal. Farmer proposed affirmative action as a correction to race-based inequities. In Farmer's time, the primary source of inequity was selection discrimination. Affirmative action effectively combated this bias. That's what the Harvard econometric analysis says. That selection discrimination has minimal effects now, and economic inequality disproportionately harms minorities. Rather than race-based inequities, we have class-based inequities that drive racial inequality. So let's address those instead. LBJ's original advisors on affirmative action, A. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin, also support this principle. Randolph and Rustin supported preferential selection, or affirmative action, as a short-term solution in the 60s, but proposed a freedom budget as a long-term solution. The proposal provided education, employment opportunities, equal access to housing, and clean air and water for the economically disadvantaged. But 50 years later, there's still a 20% gap between the white and black high school graduation rates. Blacks are twice as likely to be unemployed than whites while earning 25% less at work, and redlining maintains economic and housing discrimination, and the water supply is still poisoning marginalized communities like Flint across the United States. Affirmative action does nothing to right these wrongs. Instead of inflating minority qualifications, let's make the inflation unnecessary to begin with. Let's work to destroy the red lines, fight against poverty, and emphasize education so that minorities can attain qualifications from the start. Randolph and Rustin's ideas are still valid in modern society. A 2005 National Bureau of Economic Research paper provides evidence suggesting affirmative action is too late to have a significant effect on minority well-being, assisting them once they reach college or the employment process is too late. Yet finds that promoting youth education for all races decreases crime and significantly increases minority academic achievement. What we can see is that empirically, when policies target poverty, minorities are better off than when policies target race. Farmer would also agree. In 1998, he argued that this policy can stop when we have effectively eliminated all the gaps in education, housing, and all the other fronts where racism affects the quality of life. Now, the affirmative proposed quotas, but there's a few problems with this. The first is that it stigmatizes the minorities. Refer back to the University of California president. When they banned this special treatment of minorities, minorities actually went to college more because they were treated as equals. The second problem with this is that it commodifies the minority. The minority merely becomes an asset for a university to meet a quota or legal requirement do not turn minorities into commodities. And finally, we see that it skews the intent. Farmer said that affirmative action was supposed to be between two equals, not meeting a number of proposals. We see that affirmative action is a band-aid on a wound in serious need of surgery. So let's do the hard but necessary thing. 